On November 4, 1991, action star Arnold Schwarzenegger landed his helicopter at the Nixon Library parking lot to join Richard Nixon and Bob Hope for a special event for friends and supporters of the library. Twenty-five years later, the former governor of California returned to Yorba Linda to tour the all-new museum. In an exclusive interview, we asked him what he thought of the new exhibits. Well, you know, I loved the, the, the library the way it was, and now this was like a whole new experience. It was wonderful. I think the things that they added, uh, the digital side of it, uh, it's very exciting because it goes, you know, from his early childhood all the way up to the time of resignation and his uh, comeback again and uh, all the great work he did after that. Uh, so it was really great. It was it's amazing, the, special, the specific areas, because you learn so much when you go through a library. I mean, things that you forget, like for instance, you know, when you just come to the Vietnam War and you go by there and you see in 1969 he became president and he was inheriting a situation where there was like 500 and some thousand soldiers, American soldiers in Vietnam. And uh, then by the time he left, there was zero. I did not know that, uh, you know, that, that, that he had such an impact and did such, did such a great job to get the American men and women back. Uh, but also that the whole thing about, you know, his... Uh, first time when he won in 1968, uh, you know, there was like no debate because they couldn't agree really, uh, you know, between the two candidates of what the rules should be and stuff like that, even though there was a debate and he, he lost in 1960 because it was the first televised debate, debate. Those that listened to it on the radio, he won, and those that watched it on television, he lost. You know, so there's one of those interesting little things. So when you go through the library, you just see so many things and you learn so many things. It is kind of like if you have a mind like a, or a brain like a sponge like me that likes to absorb all this stuff. I just was in heaven going through here. In the 2004 Republican National Convention, you keynoted in New York City. You had mentioned that uh, you had saw President Nixon on TV in 1968. Um, how, did you, how did you come to become very interested in him and... Uh, 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 become captivated by his ideas for the country? Well, it was just very interesting because I left Austria and I felt kind of um, that the government was, or the whole system was a socialistic system. And uh, it had its good sides, but mostly bad sides. And so when I came over here and I had a friend translate for me when the presidential candidates were talking about the issues, and it was literally like a month before the election, the presidential election in 1968 that I came to America. So I listened to all this, all the press conferences, and, all this, and I was a fanatic about being on television and watching television because I wanted to learn English as quickly as possible. But I, I couldn't really understand anything. So I had this friend that translated for me when Nixon was talking, or when Humphrey was talking. And uh, when Nixon was talking and he translated for me, I said, wow, this is really great. He's talking about you know, uh, keeping government off your back and lowering the taxes and keeping the military straight and having the respect and, and building you know, the law enforcement and uh, you know, reaching out for the environment and doing great environmental work. And all of the stuff that he said was just like, wow, I love what this guy says. I said, you know, well, what, what, what party does he belong to? And my friend said, uh, and my friend was a Democrat, by the way, and he says, nah, he's a Republican. And I said, well, then I'm a Republican. I say, I can identify. This is really fantastic. So I think that really Richard Nixon was the one that really uh, had a great vision for the country, and it was a Republican vision. And I really loved that vision and became a Republican, supported Republican candidates, and then eventually also ran uh, as a Republican for governor of California. When did you, when did you first meet uh, President Nixon? I met him twice. I met him in the 70s, and then I met him in the 80s. As so a matter of fact, I met him the last time right here at the library, and where he uh, invited me to come here. And there was a fundraiser here, and there was like a thousand or some people here. And uh, so we talked at great length in his office before the event started. And then he went out to do a little speech at the event um, right here. And he thanked all the people that were supporting him and they were supporting the library and so on. And then, without giving me a warning, he said to me, he says, oh, I want you all to meet my friend, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold, come on out and talk, say, say a few words. And so, you know, I was like, oh my God, now I, 
a thousand people here and have to say a few words. And then I just basically uh, told them the story of how I became a fan of Richard Nixon and how he made me a Republican uh, and how I left, you know, the socialist uh, Europe um, and came over here and finally saw this refreshing Republican philosophy and, uh, you know, kind of followed that uh, ever since. I came from a socialistic country, Austria and Germany. I listened to the campaign speeches and I became a great fan of yours and also became right then and there a Republican. We went through the archives and we um, pulled an excerpt from that letter that he sent to you after the event. He said, I quote, I have met tons of thousands of celebrities over the years, and in the most cases, they make a far more disappointing impre imp impression in person than either the small or big screen. With you, the impression you, ha you had was far greater, and the reason is that in person, your intelligence, character, and conviction shine through. I was very intrigued by your remarks at the reception and believe that we see the world in much the same way. Um, do, do you remember what you said during the speech and why? What, what, I said, what I said basically was that how he, how I listened to him when I first came over here, literally I was like here a week, and I listened to Nixon when he was campaigning and how he explained his vision and how I, I really fell in love with his vision for the country and I told this to the people and that, uh, you know, that I'm a Republican today is because of Richard Nixon. And, uh, you know, and they, they kind of talked about the different things that really impressed me when he talked about the strong military, when he talked about getting the economy stimulated, or having trade worldwide, opening up and, you know, not, and making the customer the, the ultimate, not the unions or something like that, but, the, the, you know, how do we get the product to the customer the cheapest and the best possible way? You have to shop around the world. It's not just America, but you have to go and shop around the world. So he believed in, in that, the kind of things that they're doing now, but it was then. So this is the kind of vision that he had, which was really extraordinary. And I just loved his, uh, his whole uh, approach to foreign policy and the whole idea that, yes, you can be the enemy, and yes, you can fight and argue with communist China, communist you know, Russia, and the Soviet Union then, but you still have to go and reach out and uh, have peace. And I think he was a master at that. If it is in the Middle East, if it is in China, if it is in the Soviet Union, uh, and all of those things in his relationship with Europe, it was just really, he was a fantastic leader. And the Republicans today should carefully listen to his message because they can learn something from that. Uh, because the day they think that it is not a Republican idea uh, or an ideal of, of, have, of protecting the environment, for instance. It's just one example. Whereas people like him were such great, strong environmentalists. He even created the EPA in Washington and, uh, you know, fought and always talked about and fought for clean air and clean water and uh, clean ground and not to pollute the ground and all this stuff and talked about how many people die be prematurely because of pollution. So then already, in the 60s and in the 70s, he talked already about that we must protect people and therefore we must protect our environment. The Republicans today should listen to that and learn from that. Final question, what do you think, as you tour the library, you see a life of um, ups and downs, you see a life of determination. What do you think this library can teach young people who want to live a life of leadership and public service? Well, uh, first of all, I think that it is great, a history lesson of uh, you know, the kind of work that President Nixon did and what the Republican philosophy was all about. But I think it's also about uh, you know, being someone that is seeing himself more as a public servant than a party servant. Because Nixon went beyond just ideology. He did what was, in his mind, the best for the people and the best for the country and the best for the world. And also the message that you get here very quickly is, is that how many times has he tripped and fallen? And how, many, how quickly did he dust himself off and get up? Because I always believe that you know, losers stay down, but winners always get up. Well, it doesn't mean when you're a winner that you haven't fallen and you don't lose. No, you can lose over and over, but you always get up and then eventually you win. And that's what makes you a winner. And he did that. I mean, he came back every single time when he had a, when he tripped and when he fell and it didn't work out the way he wanted it. He came right back 
and like gangbusters. And so I think that uh, he actually should have created the line that I said in Terminator, I'll be back, because he came back so many times. I mean, it was just, it was fantastic to see that and for him to talk about it. And I think the whole idea of saying that, well, you know, it's, it's easier to get up and to dust yourself off and to come back if you shoot for something that is bigger than you. Because then you don't look at yourself, oh my God, you know, I just fell and I just lost or something. No, it's the bigger mission. It's the bigger cause to be a governor of the state of California or to be a senator or to be a president of the United States. All of those things, you're fighting for the people. You have to take yourself out of the equation. And he did that. And he always talked about, you know, it's always for the cause, for the bigger cause and thinking about the people and being a public servant. And that's what motivated him, and that's why he got up always and dusted himself off and went on. 